What's happening gang? You know who it is, Paul here from Project Prepper. Today I'm going to take you through a how-to video on making a A-frame shelter but with a modern twist using a tarp and obviously your creature, creature comforts of like you know your bedding, sleeping bag and so forth. So let's get to it. First thing I did upon arrival of this location, I wanted to just have a break, hydrate, and plan what I wanted to do. What sources of material is required and where I'd source them from around the location. So I basically had a brisk walk around the place and I sourced those nice two reasonably straight pieces of dead trees there. Uh, so there are about, I walked it out roughly 14 metres it was, or about 45 feet, forgive me for the conversion if it's inconsistent, but it's roughly those measurements. So I used as a rule of thumb my height, so I'm about 6 foot, so I went just a little bit higher than that, cut the first one and used that one as a way to replicate roughly the height, because I will lose that height when I create the A-frame, it'll drop. But that's okay, I just wanted to use it as a, a guide basically. So these are three inch diameter trees, so they're going to be quite tough to withstand um, elements or my weight. And um, as you can see I've been cutting them all up into pieces. So sourcing um, these trees and then also had to source other materials for my bed and my insulation which you'll see later on in this video. Here's three notches I made earlier. Now I'm onto the final one for the main frame. What I'm doing is here, I'm just going to use this um, tree here, dead tree here, as like a bit of a support set on here. So when I do my work, I might like put my hands on the ground cutting or anything like that. So I make sure that this is firm on the ground, the section I'm working on, because vibration might um, hinder your cut or your or your batoning. So. What we're doing is we're going to notch out. I put on a slight angle. Do that one right here. So now I'm just going to put two cuts there and there to help uh, the process when you're going to start chipping away, whittling out, making a notch. So it you should be um, sort of working with the grain when you start chopping it up so it helps you um, with the process like so you're working with the grain it starts chipping away so you put these cuts in the middle to help the process like so it's nice and steady when you're working towards yourself Blade slipping. Have nice control of the blade.
as you can see I'm using my hip that's another method if you want to get off the ground to notch out you see if I got on my hip here you got nice control you dig into the ground at the base now it's kind of hard if you want to work from the other side but gives you good leverage so kind of knot there get rid of that knot doesn't have to be perfect not building the Taj Mahal here you know what I mean it's just bas basic bushcraft so in a survival situation you're not going to get too fancy with it all unless you're into that whole long term survival so yeah that's the last notch for my actual frame I'm going to do some V cut notches down the bottom of the frame when I make the um, braces up so yeah let's put it all together now and get our base frame up alright so now that I've notched out my four legs to brace together so they lock in where they fit snug I now want to lash this together with some cordage so what I've done here is now that I've got my spaced out legs at the um, distance that I require for what I want it for and which will stipulate then your height of your top brace for your um, shelter I'll now place this onto the branch here so you have some spacing off the ground so then you can do your work and lash it together so it forms a nice firm fit now we'll do the box stitch on this one here so basically I'm going to start off I'm going to start here because I've got a little bit of if you can see just here I've got a bit of a gap here. I'm going to start here and just really hug it in there, the rope, to get a good um, firm start on it using a clove hitch, which I've done a video presentation on how to do a clove hitch, and I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to see that. So basically, I'll start off with a clove hitch with a bit of um, length left over, and I'll tell you why shortly. So get it right flush against the underside of this <coughs> frame here, the bottom. So I'm going to bring it down a bit. I'm going to bring this hitch down to the side here. You might want to come around on this side so you can see what I'm saying. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. So I adjust it down there so when I start this process it'll clamp in nice and tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it off with an overhand, just like that, with a little bit of excess. I'll show you soon why. Okay, now I'm going to go underneath, and that's why the branch is used as a rest. So you've got a gap here to work with. So you want to get this taut to start with, you want to come over here, nice and tight, just use your fingers to hold that down nice and tight while you use your other hand to sort out the rest of this cordage, you want to come down, bring the excess over here so I won't get wedged, and now you're going to bring it So, keep in mind the access of the initial start. And this is where you got to get nice and taut, nice and tight. Even if you got to put your foot on there, nice and tight there. So come down again, around underneath going underneath this one everything nice and taut and 
and you're just repeating the process. You're going over, under the bottom one, over, under the bottom one, over, and that's your box weave. And then you'll do a lockout, which will basically make it more taut by squeezing it all together. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm gonna lock it in the place. Basically, I'm gonna wrap it around this weave. So the box, actual the box weave itself is gonna clamp in on itself. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to loop this around at least once. If you want to do it again, you can. I'm sort of almost doing it twice. Use this excess here to tie it down in place. Just a few overhands. That's it. Use a box stitch and then I clamped it down by squeezing that box stitch together just to make it more tight and then I continue on release another one or two rounds of box stitching to help lock that in place. Use the excess from the start to do a few overhand knots. You can probably do another knot, but I just do it easier. Nice simple knots. And then the excess of this, of the end part of this rope, of your working end, can be used to then lash down the top brace. All right, guys, in order for the A-frame shelter to be stable, meaning self-standing, you have to reinforce this A-frame structure by putting a brace on each side of this A-frame structure. So that would turn this into like a tripod sort of setting where it'll uh, stabilize your shelter. So it's not going to go anywhere. If I get rid of this one, it'll want to move. The alternative setup to this is if you were to basically pin this against a tree to then stabilize it. But if you want it self-standing, this is the way I do it and it seems to work pretty well. So once I have this locked in place and then everything else reinforced and my bracing and everything, it should work pretty well. Guys, now we've got the frame up. Now it's time to brace it all. And basically by bracing it around each section, it's gonna then create my cot for the night. So as you can see, this is standing, it's sitting on the notch itself. I've notched out like a V taper notch where it'll help hug when I um, lash this bracing up and also help with the load bearing which would be my weight when I'm laying in there so I'll just take this away you can see there I just made a bit of a V tapered notch pretty simple to do all right guys now that I've laid down the slats the slats aren't braced then I don't feel the need to brace the slats because they're not really rolling and they're so close together now what I want to do is basically put down a layer of bark and depending on the region you're living in it might be something else but what I'm doing here now is by putting down this layer of bark I'm doing a couple of things one I'm insulating oneself from the effects of convection you know because you're up off the ground the wind coming in underneath you at night will pretty much take away some of your body heat so one is for warmth so insulation and two, comfort, because you want to be as comfortable as possible when you're sleeping out here in the wilderness. But I'm doing this again with a modern twist. 
using a sleeping bag and a inflatable mattress and that but you know I still want to make it as comfortable as possible so now all I'm doing is just gonna layer it to basically the thickness I desire and then we're nearly there we're nearly home free Alright guys, it's on dust now. As you can see here, I've got the cot made and all the uh, bark is laid down for insulation and for comfort. So now I'm going to basically put down my mattress, sleeping bag and then my tarp on top and then I'll see how I go tonight. Guys, it's morning, it's about quarter to six. I would have got seven hours sleep. It's actually pretty decent sleep, so I was quite surprised. I wasn't cold at all, even though there was a, a breeze all night. Um, underneath me, I was quite warm, well insulated, so that was pretty good. And the only downfall is I wish the tarp was probably a bit bigger in case of. Uh, a deluge of rain but there wasn't anything expected but it still would have kept the gist of it off me I wouldn't have been exposed at all but apart from that I think it was a success so decent night's sleep <laughs> so that concludes the video on making a standalone A-frame shelter with a bed if you guys like what you see hit the subscribe button Feel free to like, share, comment. Thanks for watching.